Hey, what is up YouTube? It's Rich. All right, this is gonna be an incredible video for people that are into not only comic art and pen and ink work, but painted work, illustration, fine art. Uh, Jeffrey Catherine Jones hits it all. I will say up front, like for Zeta's work, Jeff has uh, nudity in it. So if you're sensitive to that, or if you're, you know, like a little kid, you may want to bail out. <laughs> but past that, this is pretty incredible. I got together a really, really nice set of images. And um, I can tell some stories that I know about Jeff, his work, uh, people that are fans of his work and stuff. So it should be a fun journey through um, the art in particular. And then, you know celebrate uh her life his life um however you want to slice it Kaluta always goes back and forth i think wrightson did too there's actually one bernie wrightson piece in here that i shared um and some funny things with bernie wrightson that you'll see in a little bit um but uh yeah so let's get going on this we'll look at this and then i'll start sharing stories so um you'll see in jeff's early work a lot of a frazetta influence as he moves along it it starts to change and his color palette changes and to me he kind of went in more of like an nc wyeth sort of route there's probably other things too but but he really created a very identifiable uh, look for his work and and honestly um going through these images and picking them his pen and ink work is just ridiculous how good it is I mean, I've been inking for many, many years, and, like, I see his work, and I think to myself, what have I been doing with my time, and why am I not better? <laughs> I'm not kidding when I say that. Like, his stuff is ridiculous. It's so good. So, um, anyway, we'll keep moving along. This is a really beautiful piece. It almost feels like a prelim, but, you know, when, when artists were hired back in the 60s and 70s to do book covers, a lot of times the deadlines, you know, you got the work because you could turn it around fast. So this may or not be a fully finished piece, but either way, I think it's really cool. His anatomy is just killer. Um, they would pose, you know, like, like, um, before even the studio, which was Kaluta, Wrightson, Barry Windsor Smith, and Jeff Jones, uh, you know, these guys would get in costumes, they would, you know, get naked and run around, and, and, uh, Frazetta and his friends did the same thing. <laughs> Sounds funny. Get, get, get naked with your friends and run around, snap some photos. <laughs> uh. But all right, let's keep moving. All right, we'll go into full screen mode too. Um, let me. So this is uh, what W C Fields. It's a nice little piece. I'd actually never seen this before. Um, it looks like it's a print of it, but uh, it's nice. You know, I'm tripping on his lip. I don't know what's going on with the lip to teeth ratio here. Um, but uh, yeah, it gets a little. It's like a little, a little weird right there. Um, but not a big deal. But he's got like the drunk guy nose, and then this sort of gimpy hand coming up. That's. A little weird when i originally saw it i thought he was holding a cigar but i don't actually see the cigar now or maybe that is i can't remember what his like tagline was he used to say something the the look at the pattern on the tie though this is pretty incredible talk about indicating form with the shapes that you put on it i always stress this in a lot of my um educational videos i do for uh patreon but but the form I mean, you can literally just see how he's put this pattern on the tie and it just dances over the 3D geometry of this tie that's, that's, we're at an angle, we're looking down on him, There's, this is his chest, it's bowing out and those patterns just move over it. It's really, really incredible and very nicely done. And now I'll get into some stories. So, believe it or not... Frazetta actually was a fan of Jeff Jones. Um, I I can't remember if it was Doc Dave Winowitz that told the story of it or not, but uh, you know they would they would always show Frazetta work. You know, like hey, check this out. You know, because Frank was so good, and Frank is a very competitive guy, and he's also I always felt like maybe like a little paranoid and insecure. Um, and Frazetta is one of my favorite artists, so I'm not talking shit about the guy, to be clear. I'm just saying that, that like, I think those are personality traits that are sort of in him. 
and um, Frank actually really liked Jeff's work, and in fact, he would like when they would bring him books, you know, his gifts and stuff like that. He'd always ask, not not always, but but he he would ask like, hey, you got that one guy stuff, and and uh, it was Jeff's stuff, and he did really enjoy it. I think that's really really cool. You can see this has got a little bit more of the like N.C. Wyeth um, kind of vibe, or maybe um, like. Uh, Winslow Homer, or, you know, Winslow Homer, I mean, everyone knows Whistler's mother, or is that right? I think, um, but, but he's an incredible artist. I have a hardcover book of his stuff. I remember going through his stuff online years ago and just being like, holy shit, like, he's famous for this one painting, but he's so much better than that. This is great. So you can see how much his work evolved out of the Frazetta thing into this other thing, and it, it is truly incredible his palettes and stuff like that are just so sick and uh this stipple brushy effect that he gets when he puts down the um color it's really really cool it's like man so nice this is a little tiny scamp but hopefully we can enjoy it but you know you can see those really kind of billowy clouds i think we'll have to look at it about this size but just that little glimmer of like light on the the flag here it's just really really nice nice looking work okay so this is interesting um this is definitely bernie wrightson and this is bernie wrightson i there's not a doubt in my mind that that he used reference uh used bernie as a model for these two drawings in particular and probably this as well I and mean, this is 100 percent bernie and uh it's pretty cool but look at the inking on this it's just ridiculous I don't think I've ever done anything this cool in my career. It's just like this one piece. It, it's got these beautiful pointy strokes, the kind of diluted ink. I mean, there's just this bounce and vitality to it. It's tight when it needs to be. It's loose when it needs to be. And man, it looks good. It looks really good. I love the way he does hair. This is all very cool. It's just, it's a real, real artistic approach to inking and so damn good things changed a lot you know i mean i came in during the image boom and the image boom there was a lot of pressure to basically be a sort of clone of what the hot style was and that's what the companies wanted so i didn't really care at that point i mean i did actually i changed real quick i always tell the story of like within three months of me working pro i was already going to basically like my pen and ink stuff that i do now um but uh, to get in i did have to kind of like learn the hunt 102 and you know stuff that i was i was i was more brushy so but you know it was, it's like i hadn't really stuck my flag in any sort of like particular style i was uh, stylist probably you know this is an interesting little spot illustration it's cool to see the strokiness of it though you know it's neat you can see the canvas and that real heavy application of white and then this, the, the application of the paint this is cool a lot of these I got off heritage auction site and so a lot of them, the, they didn't really have what I would consider key, key pieces. There's there's some, but a lot of these are like prelims or unused versions of the paintings. I think, I mean, Jeff had a lot of like psychological issues and an alcohol problem as he went along in his life and um, kind of fell off the grid multiple times and really struggled with sort of like his, his sanity. Um, uh, and uh, so I think that there were these dark areas where, you know, he just wasn't able to finish stuff self-doubt a lot of stuff was going on this is early early work it looks like it almost says bill sienkiewicz i guess the, oh that's the original signature and then he signed it again later um this is another one this is i don't know what year this would have been this looks earlier it reminds me of some of frazetta's stuff when he was young um and hadn't fully blossomed into frazetta frazetta uh, this is a prelim, I think. It doesn't look finished. Um, these are always interesting. It's interesting to see, like, so what goes down first. He's got this light blue. He painted over it. Um, but, you know, you can kind of see what his block-ins are, which is interesting. I mean, it's, if you're into painting, you know, it's, 
there's a level of curiosity of how the painting is built up. This is really good. Look at this stuff. I wish I could ink like this. It's just, man, I don't even know what tool this is. <laughs> I couldn't even guess. I have no idea. It doesn't look like brush. These look like pen strokes, but yeah, I have no idea. <clears throat> and he breaks rules that I would sometimes like um, tell people to watch, but he understands form good. But but doing hatching like this, just out of the blue and sort of like one spot, can look weird. You know what I mean? Because he doesn't have it consistently over the whole piece. There's a little bit there, but the direction of it is fine. It's appealing. He's got it going over the form both ways, and then he puts a little bit in here. But um. Yeah, this Trisket pattern, you have to be careful, I call it this Trisket weave. Um, depending on where you use it, it can look weird, but he, he created a dark value with it, so it seems to work. He's got a little bit of it here, but it starts to indicate a plane, though. I mean, that looks like a, a squared off piece of, I don't even know what he's sitting off, it's rocks or trees. It's actually a pretty cool... Um, shot you know like you've got this canyon down here and this sort of godlike guy but it's it's almost got two views because this is at a very very different angle than him because he's straight up unless this is just sort of i don't know it almost feels like you can look out the horizon line goes this way but yet he's not at that angle this is an interesting little pen and ink piece but again you can see the bounce of his line i don't really get hung up on inks that's the funny thing is like i'm not like someone who when I look at art, I immediately go to the inks. Um, but with these pieces, not only are they great drawings, but they are really great. Just such vital lines. So cool looking. Yeah, they're really, really cool. This is cool because you can really see the ink on the paper. It's some, some dark ink. Man, this thing must have looked so cool when it was wet. Like when he was throwing these lines and they were all glossy and stuff. But this is very Bridgman-y. Very Frazetta-y. Just solid, solid drawing. This is a really cool piece. I think this is a, um, a print... But it's not a terrible reproduction of it. I love the dragon's face. It's I saw a couple of different scans. There's some real subtle colors on this woman's flesh. This like like there's like a blue a bluish sort of hue underneath. There's this like sort of very light pink, and then these kind of creepy sort of ref, it's almost like reflective light off the dragon showing on her body. And this is cool. The tail. This guy's making a big mistake coming in here. She's just like, whatever. The dragon's gonna kill you. <laughs> oh, is that his wing? This might be his wing. Wow. That's even cooler. I didn't realize that before. I thought it was, um, like, sheets or, or, like, blankets. But that could actually be his wing. Dang. This is a nice piece. This is the last one that I found. But, man, that is some crazy ink lines. It's just so lively. <laughs> It's really cool. Uh, yeah, I wanted to lighten it a little bit. Let's see if I could. Sometimes when people level scans, they think they're doing you a favor, turn it jet black, and it looks a little better when it's not. So this obviously is during his Frazetta phase. This is right out of um, one of Frank's paintings, but it doesn't have this little arm thing in this too. But uh, it, it's cool. I, I I like it. You know, uh, I'm such a big Frazetta fan. I can sometimes be protective of artists that I like that much. But uh, I don't know. I find this fun. I don't think he's trying to hide the influence. And uh, it's a really, really beautiful painting. It's really, really good. I think also the fact that he evolved out of this, it's, it's more forgiving, you know? Like, not that you need forgiveness, but... 
people get sensitive. If someone's a very, very popular artist, I think people understand that they're going to influence a lot of people because they're so good and the stuff is so creative. And usually they've made some sort of stride that's beyond or to the left or to the right of, of what was great at that moment. And then, you know, when they're doing the work, it's like you almost can't picture anything could look better. You know, it's like nothing could be a fantasy painting that if it didn't look like Frazetta, that would be kick ass. He owned it, you know, but man, this is so cool. I love seeing all this detail. I'll probably watch this video myself five or six times just to soak it all in. This is great. Great anatomy. Really, really nice. Actually, I need to start um, talking about that area more. I was, I've been working a lot on legs for people and the elbows and knees and stuff like that, but that's a sexy part of the leg right there. Those ligaments. This was a cool little piece. I don't think we're going to be able to blow it up too much, but <coughs> kind of interesting. This is nice. This has got a little bit of a Alphonse Mucha La Pater sort of thing going on and maybe like a little Gustav Klimt. He's definitely a fan of Klimt. There's a few pieces that, that uh, he had done that, that definitely could see that he was into the those artists. And why not? They're both great. So this was interesting. It looks like Hugh Hefner. <laughs> Which wouldn't surprise me with the ladies. I don't know what I can't remember what this was for, but yeah, it could be an illustration for like Playboy magazine. It's funny. I don't know why this is black right here. It's weird. Let's see something. It is like a splotch of paint that went on his hand. One, two, three. I don't think that's supposed to be there. The girls are cute. He's got that Frazetta thing. Her boobs are great. This is nice, too. Yeah, it's cool. And you can see the hands are just... Everything is really kind of suggestive. That toe is crazy, but it doesn't really, like... It's not... It doesn't stand out so much. It's like... There's, like, a little toe in front of the big toe. <laughs> and her face is a little crooked, but it's... I kind of like it. Her hair is great. But, yeah, it's like... This is a really nice little angle, too. I love the color that he gets in the hair. That's really, really cool. Zoop. This is some of his later work. He was really getting really good at this point. So it was interesting. One time... Man, this was probably in, like, 2005. I was really getting into Jeff Jones's stuff. And I... He had a website up at the time. And I don't remember how it all fell in the place but I had been looking at it and I just like on a whim I just went like you know what I'm gonna write this guy an email and tell him how awesome he is and how excited his work is making me and lo and behold he wrote me back like almost right away it was crazy I've never had a, a, a fan interaction like that before especially with someone who I really do consider like legendary but uh he wrote me a real nice like little note back saying thank you and he'd been going through a rough time at that point and he had been offline for a while and kind of missing i remember that there was a lot of hubbub about commissions yeah this looks like rights and two it's probably from that same story um but uh yeah and so so people were kind of hunting him down and you know wondering where their commissions were as he was sort of having like a lot of like again sort of psychological problems and stuff like that and uh um it was exciting it was it was very very cool getting a note back that's so cool look at the inks man love it that's so good it's an interesting shadow over her face love this too oh it's so good that's really nice too <laughs> Good hand. I love that finger turning. This is nice too. Again, he's great with hair. My hands are real loose. Looks good though. 
If you notice, a lot of the lines don't connect. I've been recommending that to people that want to loosen up their stuff, is if you can break your lines up, it definitely will make some breathing room. And in fact, there's a piece in here, I think it's a pencil drawing that he did, where it was a little earlier in his career, and you'll see he didn't do that, and it looks a lot more static. This is great. This is one of the more um, expensive pieces that Heritage had. It's a beautiful, beautiful painting. I think it went for like 20 grand, which actually is pretty affordable, I think, for something of this quality. But it is what it is. This is really cool. He actually did some Game of Thrones art for one of the novels back in the day. If I see the piece, I'll point it out. But um, yeah, when I was looking at the art, I was surprised to see that. I was like, Game of Thrones? What? what? This is really cool. So this will be early access for Patreon. I'm going to upload it to, to YouTube right when I'm done with this. And then in a day or two, I'll probably fire it off on YouTube. Maybe tomorrow. Since I was absent so long. I'll have to pay retribution to the gods of YouTube. No. This is cool. Fulfillment is linear. <laughs> it's like Mad Max. That's crazy. What is going on, dude? Idol. Oh, this stuff is so cool. Wow. I don't even remember this piece. It's interesting. I have this book. It's real big. It's like a Marvel treasury size um, collection of these black and white pieces. What's nice about this, though, honestly, is that it is an RGB scan since this is off of the original art. Um, the Idol book is grayscale, so it would look more like this. Which is nice, but it does, it looks flatter, you know, that's the thing, is, if I could go back, you know, there's just a little bit of value to the, the ink that you don't get with um, a grayscale file. That's so nice, man. This is really cool, too. Oh, it's so damn good. This doesn't look finished to me. Well, it kind of does, kind of doesn't. No, nah, I guess it looks finished. Man, it's so wild. I like that little bit of color right there. This is more of that story. <laughs> Wrightson's a good model. He's, like, perfect for this. A gnawing obsession. It's so cool. That's really, really nice. Yeah, they they would go and like rent like fancy clothes, or if they you know go to like a thrift shop and pick up stuff and and uh, shoot models for it. It looks good though. It doesn't look fo like it doesn't look traced. It looks like he drew it from reference. It's a big difference. The proportions are different. If you trace photos, um, the stuff can get distorted. Your heads will be too big, or the bodies will look weird. It does a lot of funky stuff. This is an interesting piece. Should have a trail of blood behind him. <laughs> and then, like, one object of curiosity here, so that you try to put the scene together of what happened. It's like, what, what did they fight over? Was it the ring? This is cool. Beautiful colors on this. <clears throat> Man, it's a nice gesture, too. Looks like he's about to swing into it and gutter. Like he's like reeling back and then he's gonna bring it around. Nice fabric on this too. Monkey. I've done a few other Jeffrey Jones videos, so if you are into this. I've done the studio book, and I think I've actually done uh, even maybe one or two other videos. Some of this could be redundant, but but what I find is you go back, you do a new video, it's, it's always fun to see it again, and it's not like you look at art one time and then you're done with it. This is more great inking. It makes me feel like I've wasted my life focused on the wrong things. <laughs> But knowing is half the battle. That's the thing. You can always right the wrongs if you see the, the issues. Issues. It's a nice hand. 
like his back foot. It's like this is cool. This is nice. And this is nice. Oh yeah, this is great. At some point, we should do a Brom video. I don't know Brom's work actually that good, but this sort of reminded me of his stuff. But uh, he is really, really talented. I've never gone full on into his work though. But uh, he's in all the arty farty documentaries. They always he's he seems to be available to talk about art. So he's done some real cool stuff. His stuff is pretty identifiable too. I think you know this is cool. Man, our stomach is great. Some nice painting right there. She's got muscle on her. Whew. Yep, dude, this is so good. This is cool too. She should be careful with that belt. It's gonna cause problems. <laughs> oh man, this is wild. What color? It's so vibrant. I just wanted to check it out. It's really cool how you painted the sword. <coughs> Excuse me. Got that nice hot spot on it. But you notice he didn't take it up all the way. A little right there. A little right there. Ugh. It looks like a uh, Henry Winkler. <laughs> this is cool. Look at the paint. It's cracking here. He must have reworked this arm a lot. There's a lot of paint here for it to crack like that. He he must have gone in a bunch of times and tried to get it. And you can see all this is cracked too. Yeah, it's an interesting outfit. This is good. It's tough stuff to do. Yeah, he kind of hit it here. Let's see. It works though. You know what? I think that was a good handling of it. If you would have if you would have drawn her feet literally, meaning like that it was all flash, this leg is a little a little flat. Um <clears throat> it would have looked weird. Like it looks better with her kind of coming out of it. For Frank would have would have done something similar to he wouldn't have drawn those feet like like as feet. And that's and that is a hard part about comic book art is is like you saw my blaster kid piece. It's like I wanted to have like a fade kind of like that. And it's like it can look you know, you it's there's a real nuance to it to make it work. Cause sometimes the silhouette can look weird, and you know, so this was a an unfinished prelim. Cover rough. He wrote it on it just so no one would confuse it. This is really great shot though. Really cool angle. Nice gesture. This is from a print set. It's a really nice little watercolor or. I, I assume it would be watercolor, but yeah, it's really, really cool. Nice little drawing. Oh, this is cool. This is from, uh, I have this comic book. It's, I love the, uh, the real simple sort of retro, uh, sci-fi gear. Always looks very, very cool to me. Man, this is a great pose. <sighs> Guy could draw so good. It's got a very confident line too, even with his pencils. It's like he really he puts it in and it's very believable and then you know, it's just really good forms. Really good forms. Great forms, in fact. This is why Frazetta would ask about his books. This is the rights and piece. Thought it was fun. They did print sets together, but thought we we could look at a little rights and really fast. It's a nice one, right? This is a print, not the original, so it's, you don't get those watery black inks, which looks so cool. Man, that hand is great. Wrightson's really good with anatomy through here, and I do mean literally, like the anatomy. Like, he really goes in and does these chunky bones. You can't really see it as much here, but I was looking at some Wrightson earlier today. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the anatomy on the hands and stuff like that is really, really kick-ass. So, we miss you, Bernie. We miss you, Jeff. We're losing all the studio guys. It sucks. This is a nice little sketch right here. It's funny because from far away I thought it was like a guy on a horse. And now I'm not so sure what it is. It might be another one of these like flying away. Yeah. <clears throat> it's cool to see his pencils. Like this is pretty interesting. This is good too. Nice foot. It's a little big right there, but I like this. I like how he did this. 
Wow, this is a nice arm. Wow, really good. I like his finger coming off the sword. Damn. This is very cool, too. Oi. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I love this. Her face is a little trippy, but... Her eyes are too close together, but um, past that, it's pretty interesting. So Frazetta. Oh, man. That is great. I like it. I like that little render, little waggly render here through here. Cool gesture with the fingers, too. This is, I think, the Game of Thrones spot illustration. This is a Wonder Woman piece. It's funny because if you've ever seen Adam Hughes' sketchbooks, Adam does a lot of stuff like this. It's it was interesting to see a Jeff Jones piece kind of like that. He is he has a very kind of famous Wonder Woman cover, but she's not wearing like the stars and stripes or whatever outfit in it. But uh, if you Google Jeff Jones Wonder Woman, you'll see it. it's a pretty cool piece. This is probably Game of Thrones too. I didn't really look at this. I was curious of what it was. It's, they're nice drawings. She's got manga eyes. Manga eyes. <laughs> manga. Come on, Rich. Seriously? Oh, yeah. This is the mouse character. It's cool. The ink line is great on it. Like, look at that. It's, it's interesting, too. I'll kind of point this out. It's like... Like Charles Schultz in particular, and Dr. Seuss too, although Schultz I think has it a bit more. He has a line like this. Like like it's why he's so great. One of the reasons why he's so great. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um like I said, I've real bad allergies today. The weather changed and it's killing me. Um but uh This is such a lively line. Calvin and Hobbes too. Bill Watterson, he's got this look. It's incredible. But it's just, man, it's the hot shit. <laughs> I guess it's interesting. If, it, if this was a Frazetta drawing, it would have a coffee stain up here and some spots of coffee. <laughs> Frank, he would always spill coffee and get coffee on his drinks. That made me think of it, seeing that little shape there. But yeah, his, his prelims and stuff like that are pretty funny because of that. It's an interesting piece. So this is, it was, I think they, they call this like the Death Girl or something like that, but it's it's Death, right? From like the DC comic. It's a very trippy version of her, but it's got to be her. I'm wondering what era this would have been. It was probably in the 90s. I don't know if this ever got saw print in any form or not, but again, it's it's his draftsmanship on these these drawings is really, really great. It looks just so studied. Um, not the drawing, but I mean, like, like it just looks like someone that really knows how to draw well. Even when the stuff is, like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's just suggested. Like, this is, like, crazy what's going on here, but, but it doesn't really bother me because it looks so confident. It's like, yeah, that's what it was supposed to look like. We'll figure it out later. This is good. Is that Storm from the X-Men? No, I don't know. If you put cat ears on her, she's kind of got them. She looked like a another like character out of like a manga. So this is I want to say Flash Gordon. He hates this story. I remember reading him talking about it. it. Was either rushed or he had to hack it out and like he just said he just kept like when he would have trouble with a drawing he would just black it out. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't remember if I read that in a book or something like that, but yeah, this was something that he kind of fought through. I don't, I didn't grab a bunch of images from it, but you can find them online. This is cool. Again, crazy inking. It's just, whew, man, the drawing with the ink. Oh yeah, this is interesting. So this is called Mermaid. She's scary looking. Man, I would not mess with this mermaid. It's a really great shot, too. I, I, I'm I assuming we're in the water looking back at the shore, which I think is really, really cool. It's like she's like leaving the water 
So I, f I find that even more kind of curious. It's like, whoever's on the land better watch out, because this chick is coming to town, and she could be up to no good, or maybe up to good. We don't know. She looks a little undead, which is a little scary. I like it. I think it's a pretty interesting piece. This is earlier work. This was the drawing that I was talking about. Philip, if you see this video, I'm sure you'll watch this. But again, you see how this figure looks more stiff, quote unquote, even though it's a fairly dynamic pose. I mean, he's really got the back arch back and stuff like that. But what slows it down and makes it look stiff is it's just overdefined. Everything is connected. Every muscle is kind of drawn and it starts to look a little dull. It gets it's better up here because it's broke apart. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like to me, that looks more like someone that really knows what they're doing with the drawing. When you get into this, it just looks like comic book art, which there's nothing wrong with that, but like, you know, like that knee is crazy. <clears throat> the foot is nice though. I think this is actually really cool. This one's not as good, but yeah, so he was getting there. I mean, this is obviously a piece earlier in his career. I and mean, you never know the circumstances of drawing it either, but uh, there's some real good stuff going on. Don't, don't get me wrong. The, like the elbow is off like if you follow this through it's in a very very weird spot in fact yeah the elbow is way way off um this is better but you know we all go through this you have to draw a bunch of figures that look like this to get to the good stuff you can see he's getting more confident here it looks like Frazetta <laughs> that's really funny it totally looks like Frank Oh man, it's so fun. It's fun I, uh, it's fun to see uh, like quote unquote like new Frazetta pieces through someone else's filter. I actually like Mike Hoffman's work. Mike Hoffman is a, someone who does a very Frazetta heavily influenced style and he would get a lot of flack for it, which is unfortunate because he's a very very talented artist, but his stuff, you know, it always looks like a Frazetta painting. There's a couple of others too can't think I don't want to say the names because I can't remember but again this is the story where he was blacking everything out to help him get through it it's not bad though I mean overall the drawings are pretty good honestly it's got a little like of a Al Williamson thing this is a nice piece she looks a little like Elizabeth Taylor Elizabeth Taylor nice hand I like how he did that. That's really cool. At some point, I might do like John Singer Sargent. Would be cool. I love his work. I've got a huge collection of his books. But I sometimes, you know, if I go too fine art, people will get probably weirded out. It would be a niche. <laughs> this is cool. Oh, man, that is so great. It looks so creepy. Like, what world is this? It's like this forest but it looks snowy or I don't even know but man the thing is crazy looking you think so too kitty I agree this is a little pen and ink piece with a little bit of color on it it's nice though nice little drawing again that real vibrant like ink line this is another like uh, either very very early piece this could have even been almost like fan art for him meaning that like before he broke in the signature is not refined and I mean, clearly the drawings have got some pretty major issues. It's it's cool though. I'm I'm like, I, I, honestly, it's nice to see something like this because you can see that he really couldn't paint yet. I mean, look at this hand. He went in to try to fix it. And it's really just kind of a mess. Um, but you can see the Frazetta influence, and the layout's not bad. I think the layout is actually kind of decent. And there's definitely things. I think the size of the sun back here is a little problematic in the placement of it. I get what he was going for, but like this little area down here is kind of cool. <clears throat> it has its moments. I kind of like this right here. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I think this little area right here is painted the nice. The This part of the this little knife right there is kind of decent. So anyway, it's, it's cool to see that. This was interesting too. He did it on Masonite. I thought that that was kind of funny. He saw Frank doing those Masonite pieces and he was like, son of a bitch. I gotta get on that. It's cool though. 
it's all really nice. It looks, it, clearly it doesn't look finished. And you can actually see his pencil drawing over here, which is fun. I see that underneath. With Frank's stuff, you don't really see the pencil drawings. I'm, I'm assuming that he must have blocked in some stuff. Maybe not. But uh, you can definitely see that he did, he did a little bit of a drawing underneath here. But yeah, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to do another Frazetta video here, maybe in a month or two, and we'll <clears throat> we'll see if we can find any like drawing remnants on them. Yeah, this was one of the ones with like a lot of nudity. The inks are really great on this, though. Again, I, it's just crazy how he does the hair. This anatomy is all very very cool. I know, Kitty. You want to eat? You've got ten minutes. Just let me finish this video. This is really good. Oh man, look at the little mouse. It's cute. <clears throat> he's got the mouse there too. And this one, he's like, whoa, buddy. Whoa. Pants, please. Look at the lizard. He's like, could you get some pants on, bro? I'm trying trying to talk to you, but <clears throat> this is getting awkward. Alright. Oh yeah. <clears throat> this is a trippy piece. <clears throat> I think I have pencils of this too. Um in here, but uh Man, the anatomy on the arm is crazy good. That is so cool. I love that way that he painted it. You can really see the canvas underneath, too. This hand's a little small. Like, oh, This is cool. We'll see it. I'm pretty sure I have the pencil in this. This was an interesting piece. I like this and this quite a bit. It's a little, a little loose here. This was cool. <clears throat> you could see how he was really learning to get more of a Frazetta thing going on. Again, he covered up the foot, or there's a, I don't know, conveniently placed. Yeah, I don't know if that's supposed to be a boot, but but it's it's fine. Like. If it's too literal, I just don't think it looks as good. You've got to find that balance of representative. This effect that he got on here is crazy. Like, that is so crazy. I guess it's gesso? It really looks wild. I would be freaking out. I'll explain why. Oh, so, I love this texture. I think this texture looks absolutely great. I think that this application of paint over it is interesting, but it doesn't totally get the effect. I think like right here, it's it's really works well. A little bit of this is cool, but there's parts of it where I would start to freak out and I would be like, you know what, this looks weird. Like, what is this? It almost looks like an animal at times, but I don't think it is. But um, yeah, this this effect is great, but some of this, I don't know what it is, a smoke or mist or something like that. It's not misty enough, but Anyway, he was brave enough to finish it, or the deadline made him finish it. This little bit of purple on her hair is really cool. This stuff. It's a nice face. It's like, cute. and It's a little... Like, her jaw is a little funky, but it's fine. This is all really cool. This is great right here. But he may have had a girlfriend or something pose for this. Possible. Oh, yeah, this is cool. <clears throat> really cool painting here. Oh man, that's great. This is all very cool. This was a book cover that I saw. His book covers are worth checking out. Like you can find like people scanned them. He did a lot of book covers. They're they're very very cool. This is nice. You can see that YF influence starting to come in on his stuff here. Lord Greystoke. It's funny because I don't know if he did any Elric paintings, but he would be perfect to do some Elric stuff. I think it would look really good. I'm trying to think of the painter's name. I don't think I'm going to remember off the top of my head. Here's the pencils of that piece. We saw before. Oh yeah, this is creepy. Super cool. 
I digs it. This is cool. I like the animal's body. The tiger. Oh yeah, this is good. So we'll start wrapping this thing up in a second. Cause it's, this video is going to be quite long. Pretty sure this is from Idol. Man, that's so good. That's a nice shot. He doesn't turn the camera that much in his other stuff. So 1974. It's crazy. This is a long, long time ago. Oh, yeah, this is cool. <clears throat> I like this a lot. So, Oh, and this is Von Bode. I, hmm, interesting. I don't know. Maybe they... Uh, I'm going to assume Jones painted it, but who knows? They may have both painted it, and I, I'm assuming they both penciled it. So maybe one of them penciled part of it, one of them penciled the other part. I don't know Vaughn painted. It's really cool, though. She looks so creepy. I think that's the Vaughn Bode part. It's nice. I like it. You can see a little pencil there. Oh yeah, look at this. This is so cool. <clears throat> Man, that is epic. This looks like 1970. That is really, really cool. Boom. I like this too. It's such a thin application of paint there. It's so, like, turped out. And that just gets way tighter. He fades it out again and again. That's all really cool. Just incredible the skill level that those guys had. Those guys, meaning, like, the, the studio guys. For our next wave of talent, man, they were good. This looks like Wrightson again. Wrightson is a model. It's just with shorter hair. It might not be, though, but... That's a cool gesture. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. This has got a little of that Alphonse Mucha, La Pater sort of thing going on. And a little climped. Really, really cool. Damn. Let me see something. I just want to see how many more pieces we have open. What time is it? 427. Okay. Alright, I gotta start wrapping this up. It's like when the bar closes and the lights come on. You're like, no, Rich, I was into this. Sorry, we got like five pieces left. <coughs> I like this too. His head's a little warped, but it looks cool too. That's nice. Nice lighting on that. Hand gets a little nondescript. Yeah, he was getting it though. It was coming together for him at this point. These are nice little drawings. Oh, so fascinating. It's so much fun looking at this different art. I always saw this piece already. Is this. Oh, it's just a shittier scan of it. Looks a little brighter. And this is the idol. We saw this already. Oh, yeah. This is cool. It's like a little bit of a different layout for him. It's pretty cool, though. This is nice. This is like that transition period from Frazetta to the color palette starting to shift. You can see his confidence in his drawing is getting better. And uh, it's starting to look like a Jeffrey Jones work. And then he started doing this stuff. And he had arrived. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. Can you imagine being a fan of his and seeing the evolution to this stuff? It's just a shame that he didn't have a consistent output that's so huge. Especially at this time, because you didn't have the internet. So, you know what I mean? People could lose track of you. 
a lot easier. But even now, I think it's still a mistake. It's like if you've got some momentum going and you dip out, it's just there's, you know, so many other options for people to sort of get into. So you got to keep it up. So, all right, have a great day. That was really, really fun. And uh, hopefully you got, like, some some good entertainment out of it, a little bit of education, and inspired to draw and create. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Check out Patreon, smash the like and all that stuff, and subscribe if you haven't. Later.